even if I was to have unprotected sex, I could not pass the virus on to anyone else. Essentially, you could argue that it's safer to have sex with me, someone who's undetectable, than someone who doesn't know their status and isn't getting tested because you don't know whether or not they have it, whether or not it's being managed, whereas I know concrete that I cannot pass it on. Hello, my name is Kyle and I am a HIV activist and semi-professional drag queen. Today I'm going to be opening up this box and answering some confronting questions about HIV. What is the difference between HIV and AIDS? So, this is a big one. HIV doesn't kill you. HIV attacks the immune system. So. The virus makes its way into your bloodstream and it attacks the white blood cells and reduces your CD4 count, which is essentially the cells that actually fight all of the things that your immune system needs to fight. And back in the day when we didn't have the medication readily available, they would attack the cells to a point where you would be weak and frail and it would develop into AIDS, which is then what would kill people. And your immune system would be so weak that, you know, a common cold, would like really, really affect you. The common misconception is that if you have HIV, you have AIDS, that's not the case. I have HIV, but I am on medication and I am managing it. Therefore, I will never get AIDS so long as I keep taking my medication, meaning I should have a full, healthy, happy life. Is it mostly gay men that have HIV? A common misconception is that HIV is a gay issue, which is probably due to the media back in the day demonising the gay community. So it was widely reported as a gay plague, um, when in actual fact anyone is susceptible to HIV. If you have unprotected sex, then you put yourself at risk. I think initially it became more of a queer issue because obviously gay men were not using protection because they were not worried about pregnancy. So it was always more of a heteronormative thing to use protection in general. And it probably is mostly gay men, but it's not solely gay men. It's anyone's issue. Okay. Oh, what a topical question. If we share food, drink, vape, <laughs> that's so 2023. If we share food, drink or vape, would I get HIV? No, contrary to what the media used to say, no. Um, it can't be transmitted that way. You are not at risk. If you know anyone who's HIV positive, you can just be completely normal with them. You can't get it from any of those things. Can you transmit HIV through kissing someone? No, that is a myth. You cannot pass it from a kiss. You can pass it from penetrative sex, unprotected sex, and you can pass it through sharing needles, but just a kiss, you are not gonna contract HIV. Would you have a one night stand? Yes, I only have one night stands. <laughs> but um, I personally, I am on medication and I'm at a point where my viral load is undetectable in my blood. So we call that U equals U, which means undetectable equals untransmittable. Therefore, even if I was to have unprotected sex, I could not pass the virus on to anyone else. And not only that, I have learned through some training and stuff that I've done over the years, I'm not morally or legally obliged to disclose my status to anyone if I am undetectable. Essentially, you could argue that it's safer to have sex with me, someone who's undetectable, than someone who doesn't know their status and isn't getting tested because you don't know whether or not they have it, whether or not it's being managed, whereas I know concrete that I cannot pass it on. So yes, I'm not gonna curb my sex life just because I have HIV. Have I ever felt ashamed? Um, yes, in the beginning. It's a, it's a long journey to get into a point where you feel at peace with it yourself. So I had a lot of the cliche reactions when I was diagnosed. It was like, oh, my life's over. I'm never gonna have sex again. How do I tell people? But I think if you get to a point where you just you know, look at it as something that is just a condition. You take a tablet every day to manage it, but you are not a lesser person because of it. And that is easier said than done, but I'm at that point, so that's great. But yeah, I have felt shame, both from myself and other people over the years, because some people are ignorant, but it's a wasted energy to be ashamed of yourself in any capacity, especially something like an SCI, which can happen to anyone. What are the main symptoms of HIV? Now this varies case to case. 
I didn't have any symptoms. I just happened to find out from an STI test that I had it, um, which I just kind of took on a whim. I didn't go because I thought I had it. But you can get a lot of different things such as nausea, sickness. Some people start feeling fatigued and really like lethargic all the time. Um, it can manifest itself in rashes and sores, but it truly is case by case. It's not a one size fits all approach. So if you're feeling ill or you've got a rash, then yeah, it's worth getting checked out. But my advice would be obviously A, use protection. But if you know you haven't used protection, that should be your symptom. You should be going to get tested because you might never ever feel any. I didn't. And then you might just one day be like, oh, I'm ill. So my advice would be to treat every unprotected sexual encounter as a symptom, essentially, because that way you'll nip it in the bud before it gets any worse. What is your life expectancy? Now, back in the day, people used to get told, oh, you've got X amount of months, X amount of years to live. People would be put into hospice. It was a darker time, but thanks to the miracle of medicine today, it's not really the case anymore. Our life expectancy is the same as an average person. And in fact, in some cases, doctors have theorized that it might be even longer because we're being checked more regularly. Every six months, I get 11 blood samples taken, which nearly makes me faint every time, but it's worth it because they come back to me. They tell me your viral load is undetectable. Therefore, I can't pass it on. Your CD4 count is at a healthy level, meaning the drugs are working. And then also they'll give you a sexual health screening every time. So every six months I'm getting a text from my doctor saying, your body's all good and here's all the reasons why. Most people don't do that. And I know, I know that because before I had HIV, I would only go to the doctors if I really felt like I needed to. Like people get to adult age and they shirk their responsibilities, me included. So yeah, our life expectancy is pretty much the same. Like you're not told you will live for a short amount of time now because of HIV. Um, how do I feel about the person who gave me HIV? Actually, with me, I was really careful with condoms. I would have protected sex pretty much unanimously. And I was in first year of uni and I was having a lot of sex with different people. The person who gave me it, well, I knew it was one of two people and I messaged them both, being very nice, being like, I've just found this out. You might want to get tested because obviously one of you has given me it. Um, one of them was really lovely about it and then sent me a follow-up message saying, um, oh, yeah, I've been tested. I don't have it, but thank you so much for letting me know. I hope you're all right. Exactly what you would want to hear. The other person was like, you're disgusting. How dare you accuse me of having HIV? You're all of these awful things. And my, my mind straight away was like, so it was probably you because you're so defensive rather than being like, thanks for letting me know, I'll get checked, which led me to believe it was him. And then when the other one told me he didn't have it, I was like, okay, it was you. I don't feel any type of way towards him because one, he was a one night stand and I don't know him, but two, I see it as kind of a good thing now. Like I've arrived at a place where I think it's given me a purpose. So I guess thank you is what I would say for like giving me something to be passionate about and like helping me find something that is really like my calling almost. So cheers, I guess. <laughs> Would you tell someone about HIV on a first date or on your dating app? Now, this can be quite confronting for most of us um, because there is still very much a lot of stigma there. I, I don't tell everyone. Usually if I start to get to know someone a bit better, then I'm interested. But also my dating life's a shambles, so not really the one to tell you about that. On dating apps, Grindr have a really great feature, which is you can have your HIV status on your profile. So you have like what you're into, your age, your pronouns, and that's one of the things you can put in your bio. It's a really good thing. It's really progressive because what it does is it normalizes HIV. It's like, if we all just have our status on our profiles, then we're all acknowledging that it's kind of a normal thing to talk about. However, it can kind of have the reverse effect because I don't have it on there always. A lot of people don't because what it actually does then do is people just block you because you have HIV. People will openly tell you, not interested in positive guys. Like it can, grinder and apps like that, it can 
encourage the good, the bad, and the ugly in every context. So it's I think it's really good, and I appreciate that Grinder has it as an option. I would tread carefully having it on your profiles, make sure it's something you're comfortable with, and make sure you're ready to potentially receive messages that might upset you, because not everyone is as open about it as someone like me. How do you feel about media portrayals of people with HIV and AIDS? Well, I could, I could talk for a while about this one. If we, if we go back a little bit, when people started getting HIV and AIDS, um, it was obviously affecting queer people first and foremost. And therefore it gave, almost gave the media an excuse to vilify and demonize us as a queer community. So rather than it just being, we hate the gays, but we keep it under wraps, it was like, oh, yes, we've got them. Now we can post headlines being like, gay plague, hits the country, all of this, and it was intense. I mean, there's lots of TV shows on it, it's a sin. There's lots you can watch to like really get a gist of what it was like, but it was awful. And the ripple effects of that are still here now. So my feelings on how it was portrayed then are I'm disgusted, I think it's abhorrent, and I think the reason the stigma is so prevalent today is because of that. I do think it's vastly improved. You know, each Pride, I feel like we see more and more openness and openness, but the more open we are about it and the more the media portrays it in a positive light, kind of makes the right wing negative people bristle a bit more. So it does kind of encourage more hate as well. Um, but I think we're moving forward in the right direction. How do you test for HIV and what is the best way to test in the UK? So the best thing to do is always see a doctor because they will test you for HIV there and then, but also coupled with that, you get reassurance, you get information and knowledge that you might not have if you're sat at home alone. And should the test be positive, you get comfort, rationale, things to read up on and eventually medication. And essentially it is just a prick of blood. And when you do it in person, there's a little litmus paper. And if a red line appears, you're positive. I've never done a postal kit, but I believe it's the same method just without a doctor present pretty much. It's pretty easy. And also there's like pop-ups and everything now. You go to Pride, they do things at colleges. I volunteer with a charity called Skyline and they're a support group that do amazing work in Yorkshire and they go around colleges giving out tests and stuff like that or you can get tests on the spot at the stall so it's really easy don't live in ignorance do you tell everyone you meet so in the beginning i was very close off about it so i told my best friend told a couple of other people and then for me it would manifest itself in drunken outbursts so i would like get drunk, lose my inhibitions, and then I'd have a cry about it to someone. You know how we, we kind of all do that with our trauma a little bit. If we have something that we don't tell everyone, it can come out whenever you're like under the influence. And that was kind of like how I would tell people. And like more and more friends knew via drunken outburst. Um, but now I'm at a place where it's not like, hi, I'm Kyle, I'm HIV positive. But I do tell people, if it ever comes up in conversation, I'll be like, yeah, I have it and here's some info on it. I have this tattoo which is about my HIV and it's supposed to signify like cutting the ribbon of AIDS. It's based on a Keith Haring art. Now that's relevant because people will always be like, oh, what's your tattoo? Is it a tarot card? And I'm like, no. And then I have to explain what it is. So I've kind of branded myself with it now at the point it's on my forearm. People do ask me what my tattoo is or people idly mention HIV. Whenever that happens, I now just see it as an opportunity to educate people. But I'm also very confident in myself and I'm very sure of my opinions and my stance on HIV. So, you know, not everyone feels this way. Some people don't tell anyone, but it's all about just assessing whether you think someone is gonna be accepting or not. And if you think you can educate them or help them learn, change their opinion, then go for it and try. But so you do have to protect yourself. So some people will just never get it. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, a lot of older people, closed-minded people, some people's minds won't be changed. But if you feel confident doing it, you should always try, I think, because you'll be surprised at how, like, open-minded people are. But yeah, I pretty much tell anyone now, if it comes up, then you're getting a lesson. <laughs>
And yeah, that's all of them. That's it.